Time to get work on a uh, filter system. Gonna filter the gas as it comes out of the gas fire. <clears throat> I'm doing a basic Wayne Keats style A filter. So here I've got a 18 inch water heater housing for what's left one because I cut up the other pieces of it and those are pieces that are uh, inside the fire tube on the gas fire. That's the parts of the video you guys haven't seen unless you're a member of the premium side on the drive on wood forum. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, 18 inch tank. I welded a top on it out of that same green 14 gauge sheet we had. Here I've got what's going to be the two gas inlines coming into the filter. So these are just really basic stand pipes. They, um, they sit about four inches inside the container down into about here. And there's going to be a five gallon bucket or part of one on the inside of this drum that will be perforated with holes. And the gas will be coming from the rear condensate tank up into these two pipes. They'll go into that bucket and disperse the gas wide across the container where we'll have some uh, bags of hay in here. Uh, this is super basic, straightforward fabrication. Just the one thing to keep in mind if you're going to use water heater tanks, keep in mind there's almost always a reason that it was thrown away in the scrap pile. It's probably got rust holes in it. This one was pretty rusty. Um, I cleaned it up. I can't find any leaks in it, so I'm going to go ahead and run it. Um, this should have been two and uh, three sixteenths pipe coming out of here, but I'm running low on that. So I've got a piece of two and a half inch exhaust that I use for the two stand pipes and a short piece that is the right diameter that two inch PVC couplers will be able to slide onto. That's how the gas will get connected there. Because this was a water heater tank, it had some uh, one of the temperature senders here, and then I don't remember what was in here. I just plugged those off. Like I said, welded well, a cap onto it. Now I need to get um, a lid that I can mount onto this so this is serviceable. And then I got to place two of the gas outlets, which will take and set it up to the mixer box on the motor. Some way to drain off the condensate that's in this thing. Hopefully, as it condensates, it'll come down, hit this dome, run to the edges, and be able to pick it all up right here on the corner. I don't have a fill lid for this yet. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to water test it right now, um, but I'm not too worried about that. <coughs> I've already got some holes cut in the bed where these two will slide down through it, and this one will as well. These two hang about an inch and a half below the bottom of the bed boards, so that's just enough room to slide on a 90 degree PVC fitting. This pipe is two and a quarter exhaust because that's all I have. I'm, I'm working with the last little bits of material I got. and. Uh, a two inch fern coat cap will slide onto this just fine. And this is also going to be completely hidden behind the bed rail frame, but still easily gotten to for any draining. Um, when you're working with these, they, they've got a type of coating on the inside that you need to grind away if you're doing any welding on the inside of the barrel at all. The outside, these aren't painted at all. They've just got uh, a mill scale finish on them. So it is important to actually clean that off so you get a good penetration on your well. Let's go test fit that on the bed. That's about where she's gonna sit. Now, this container is much shorter than I wanted it to be, but due to gas prices being over five bucks a gallon again, I'm going with the container that I have. So, it's shorter than I want, but it's still gonna fit two laundry bags in it and maybe something else up on top. I'm not sure yet. Figure that out when it gets there. But that's where it's gonna live. Um, yeah, I do think it looks a little bit dopey having it offset all the way to the side. But I did that for one very, very specific reason. Something that bothers me in my Toyota. I cannot see out of the rear view mirror. At least with this position, 
I look in the mirror, I can just see the corner of it sitting over there. I can still see, well, I can't see because of the camera, but I can see the bed. I can see the back of the truck. That's the best visibility I'm gonna get with uh, that container. See, if it was taller, it wouldn't really be an issue. I'm not really losing anything. And also it's hard to tell, but in the camera, where I'm looking right now, my head is actually covering the container in the mirror. So it's actually not in my vis visibility whatsoever. That's why I went offset all the way to the other side of the bed. Then also another reason I set it up that way, you can see there is lots of room to get those gas pipes. Stay nice and tight to the bed, right underneath the frame rail, right back to the rear condensate tank. Here's the drain right here. I'll just have a cap. The cap will be black so you won't even notice it sitting here. That'll work out pretty good. So I'll have 90 degrees going that way, 90 degrees right there, straight back and hooked up. Oh, and I forgot this little uh, cable here. You can see our rear condensate tank valve, or technically the dump valve. This is where our blowers are gonna hook up. The blower is gonna be mounted underneath of that cross member. So I still need to pipe that in. But this is electrical taped on. I don't want it to screw it down, but I need it to be airtight. Now you can see cable. Let's come over here. And here is the linkage I created. This is a 3 8 bolt washer and a nylock factory bolt hole in the frame and a 3 8 spacer with a piece of 8th inch thick by 1 inch by 3 inch tab off each side. Farmer's eyes and the cable, both sides. You can see how this will cam. And it will open up that valve. That cable runs all the way forward into the cab, right to this handheld control. So when I'm warming up in the morning, that's open. It can now purge out all the gas out underneath the truck while the blowers are running. When I start running rich on the O2 gauge, meaning I've got gas pulled up to the engine, I can just reach down while I'm driving, flip her back. She's sealed off. All gas from that point will go to the hay filter, down through the tubes I still haven't added, up to the engine bay. Now as far as mounting goes, there's going to be two gas lines hooked on the bottom and two gas lines that will be coming out the front right here. So that's already going to be pretty securely sitting there. But as far as being actually secure, I'm going to put a tab off the back or maybe one there, one there, and one in the front that I can take and bolt this whole container down to the bed just so it doesn't have any opportunity to be moving around. This is also one of the reasons that I have not yet put the angle iron underneath the front boards. I didn't know where this was going to end up and I didn't want that angle iron being in the way for where the gas lines are going to be coming down right here off the front and going through the bed. If that angle iron was in the way it would have been quite a bit more of a turd and this is also going to be PVC right here so I don't want it, the opportunity for it to rub up against a piece of steel and uh, eventually wear through just from road vibrations and whatnot. That's also why, just like the gas fire on the other side, I kept it real tight to the cooling rails here, and I got lots of room up here. So I'm gonna have one pipe coming off right here and down, one right here and down. Once I have those, I will go ahead and mark out on the bed, hole saw the holes out. Then this thing with its feet can get bolted down, painted, and installed on the truck. And at that point, I can actually plumb everything. I can run all my gas lines, get it all hooked up. And the only thing that's gonna be left is I need a filler lid here, I need a filler lid over yonder. If you get to find those, I will find them, and hopefully soon. Another reason I use that 14 gauge, um, because it's thin enough and I put enough heat to it, you can see this whole piece has a dome across the top. This is going to shed water instead of puddling water, which is one problem with the factory barrel lids. They've got a step down, so they like to puddle water right there. I don't want any chance of water sitting up on top of this and prematurely rusting it out. That lid actually has a pinhole in it that I'm going to have to fix, and it was because water was sitting on top of it. The whole top of that thing is corroded. 
I've cleaned it and painted it. It was on my other truck, but it's got a pinhole I'm gonna have to fix. But, so that's why I went with the heavy stuff on this. Um, this container is also 14 gauge. But like I said, it's got that protective coating on the inside that'll keep the wood gas from corroding it away. I will, once I have the fill lid on it, reach down inside and paint the inside of my welds on all three of those pipes and paint the inside of where these go on. So I've got that, that one extra layer of protection. So there I got the feet welded on. Just a piece of quarter inch thick angle iron. I think this is a one and a half by one and a half. Cut it an inch wide in a three eighths bolt hole. You can see they're triangulated on there. I made sure that those bolts are gonna land in the middle of a two by six on the bed so they'll have a, a good purchase. Um, this is all welded up down here. So the last thing we need to do is our gas lines they'll be coming out of the top. Um, so all I did was I bucked a hole, I've got once again, I'm running low on material. This is two and a half inch pipe that's gonna go inside the barrel. And the uh, two and three eighths outside diameter pipe coming off of the leg where I joined the two together. And that'll slide just in the hole like that. Um, one thing we need to keep in mind, I actually screwed this up on my first truck. Two things, you're gonna have a Fernco that connects on right here. So you need to have enough room in between the bottom of the, the gas outline and your container that you can slide this on there. Mine is super, super tight to the barrel on the Toyota. And also I discovered another problem doing it that way. I didn't have enough space underneath to complete the weld all the way around. I couldn't get my MIG gun in here. But that was running the big Miller. Luckily I have a little Lincoln. So this time I'm making sure that I have enough room I can just run one welder to do the whole weld all the way around. Got our edge nice and cleaned up. Went in with a flap wheel and a die grinder. Removed all the burrs, cleaned the top. Using this piece of angle iron as a spacer, that gives me three quarters of an inch. That's plenty of room for the Fernco fitting that'll hook onto here. That's also plenty of room that I can get the MIG gun all the way around. Now I gotta clean this one up and get them both welded in. And this is ready for paint. Get a paint day, maybe throw it in the truck later this afternoon if the paint's dry enough. There's the first round of paint. Problem is, it's three o'clock on Friday, so I ain't gonna be dry enough to put in today. But I'll get another coat or two on it. Um, I'm just painting it rough on the top. I didn't do any prep at all because I know I'm gonna be grinding most of this off to put the lid on. Um, so yeah, not too worried about that. I cleaned all the mill scale off the sides. That was a chore. That's why the floor looks disgusting, because this is all mill scale. But anyways, got her all cleaned up. First coat of paint. She's definitely going to be ready to put in by Monday. Thanks for watching, guys.